I have been using the new iPhone 16 Pro for a while now, and I actually struggled to review this. I mean, did you really need another person telling you, yes, it's a bit faster and the camera's a little bit better? Instead, I wanna focus on how I use the iPhone for both my professional life and my personal life, and how the iPhone 16 Pro either improves it or maybe just doesn't, it doesn't change at all. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Let's get into it. All right, so the big new feature of the iPhone is the camera control button. It's not very often Apple adds a physical button to the iPhone. In fact, it's almost weird that they've added two physical buttons two years in a row. But this is a dedicated button for launching the camera and taking photos and controlling a few things in the camera app. I absolutely love this button because it's been a physical reminder for me to take more photos. And I absolutely have noticed I've been taking way more photos with the 16 Pro than any other iPhone before. I did find the camera control setting adjustments to be way too finicky. I was accidentally changing camera settings when I didn't want to. So I went into a settings, accessibility, camera controls, and turned off control gestures. Now the camera control button just opens the camera app and takes a photo. For the most part, and I, when I say most part, 95% of all photos I take are raw photos. This gives me the ability to go into Lightroom and edit these photos and make them the way I want them to look. Now, I've built a few presets over time that I just work off, but usually what I do is I'll pick one of those presets and then I'll just go in and I'll tweak it for each photo because while presets are nice, I don't consider them as just like, click a button, one and done. You have to go in and still tweak it to make it fit right for that photo. Now, photographic styles are the other new feature in the camera app, and I find them very finicky and easy to reset. I really wish there was a way to tap like the tone and color bar and manually type a number because I find that graph to be very hard to get ex set exactly where I want it to set. Like you can easily, like if you're changing tone, you can easily change the color as well. So I would love the ability to create user presets be like okay yes i want amber and i want it at negative 50 tone and 10 color that's that's actually the preset i like the most i want to be able to save that like let me hit a save button so that i can always just go like user amber or whatever you want to call it and then the added benefit would be users could share those presets with other users as well like a lot of, there's a lot of photographers that i have seen sharing their uh favorite uh photographic style and their preset and stuff like that and they're just having to take screenshots but it'd be really cool if they could just be like hey yeah this is my favorite tap this button boom now it's saved in your camera settings as well now, like I said, my favorite photographic style, the one that I think looks best is amber with a tone of negative 50 and a color of 10. This tends to work best in rooms with a cooler lighting, kind of like what I'm sitting in now because I have my filming lighting and stuff set up. That's where it tends to work best. It also works best outdoors during the day. Uh, but if I was taking like sunset photos or in a room with a warm color palette, I would change it to a different photographic style. But what is nice about photographic styles is they're not baked into the image. So if I did accidentally take one with that preset, that amber preset that I like and be like, oh no, this doesn't work. I can go in and change it after the fact. That's what I like about that, which is also what I like about raw photos as well. Now, what's weird is you can't take a raw photo and apply a photographic style to it, which to me seems like, yes, that's the obvious way. Like give you users the ability to take a raw photo because what a raw photo is is a photo with a crap ton of data built into it highlights shadows you can fix all that stuff if highlights are blown out shadows are too dark you can fix all of that stuff but you can't take a raw photo and apply a photographic style to it and i don't know why so personally i just stick to taking raw photos for everything because ambient light temperature may be different indoor versus outdoor people landscape product photography car photography all that stuff makes a difference and this way i just kind of get a normal image and then i can throw it in the lightroom and edit it the way i want it to be now the biggest improvement to the physical camera array is the ultra wide lens the ultra wide lens is now getting a 48 megapixel sensor I was never really a huge fan of the ultra wide lens on previous iPhones. I rarely, if 
ever used it just because I, I didn't like the image that you would get out of it compared to the main camera image. But now, because it has a very similar sensor size, you're getting the same quality of image. You're just changing the focal length. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. This is the Ugreen Uno Charger 100 Watt. This is a four port 100 Watt GAN fast charger. But this isn't just any fast charger. The Ugreen Uno line comes with a unique robot appearance. Remove the feet to reveal the plug. On the display, you will see different emoji animations based on the current charging status and process. This comes equipped with four charging ports, three USB-C and one USB-A. You can use just one or all four ports at once. Both the C1 and the C2 port do up to 100 watt charging, perfect for charging up a MacBook or an iPad Pro. This will charge an iPhone 16 from 0 to 57% in 30 minutes. There is also the Ugreen Uno 2-in-1 magnetic wireless charger 15 watt. This is a perfect bedside or travel charger for your iPhone and AirPods. This has the same robot appearance and will display unique emojis based on the status. This is a certified Qi 2 charger and meets the needs of a 15 watt charger for an iPhone and a 5 watt charger for AirPods at the same time. Ugreen has a whole lineup of new Uno products. These are fast, fun, and accessories for your iPhone and other devices. I'm going to put some links in the description below to where you can go check them out. My thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Now, I've been recording a lot more video with my iPhone recently because I started this whole new short series, which is kind of like a behind the scenes look at how I work, apps I use, tips and tricks, things like that. And I've been filming all of that on my iPhone just because I, I, I'm... I love my nice camera, but I don't want to be neglecting what is clearly the future. I've been using the app Kino to film everything with this. Uh, instead of the built-in camera app, I've been using Kino because I can have a built-in color grade with all my footage. The whole purpose of this short series is just to be fast, cut together quickly, not take up days to get out like my normal videos and stuff like that. I want to be able to produce these really quickly. I've also been using the ultra wide lens a little bit with this when I just want like wider shots of this room or my office area and stuff like that. And I'm really happy with how that footage is looking. Overall, just big improvement across the board with the ultra wide lens. I think it just looks a lot better this year. So the new studio mic system on the iPhones is it basically it's pitched as like you can get really high quality audio recording no matter where you are. The microphone here on the iPhone 16 Pro does sound much better than previous versions of the iPhone. In the past, I would never rely on the iPhone's built-in mic, but if this was my best or only option, I would be happy with this. Like if I'm in a pinch, like I'm traveling or these mics aren't working or something like that, like say they break or something like that, I would 100% be okay using them. I'm, I'm quite impressed with how they work. Now, something I appreciate about the iPhone 16 Pro line over the 15 Pro line is the 16 Pro stays much cooler. Thermally, it is a much better design. The 15 Pro was notorious for getting hot very quickly. In fact, fun antidote, when I was transferring all the stuff from my old iPhone to my new iPhone, the 15 Pro got hot while the 16 Pro stayed cool. I read a lot on my iPhone, especially if like I'm sitting on the couch or in bed or something like that. That is primarily where I do a lot of reading on my iPhone, whether it's RSS uh, from Lear or my Read It Later app, Raindrop.io, or even reading a book from the Books app. I do a lot of reading on my iPhone, especially when I don't want to go grab my iPad Pro. I use a 13 inch iPad Pro. That thing is big. Holding that in portrait mode, it's a bit much. So I do quite a bit of reading on my iPhone. While I have been reading books in the Books app on the iPhone, I do think it does work a little bit better on the iPad mini, uh, just because like you have a little bit more space. The iPad mini is also great holding one-handed, but if you don't have that device, the iPhone gets that job done as well. Despite having the Pro and not the Pro Max, I still feel it's very comfortable to read on the Pro. Yes, it's not the biggest screen, but it's still a very big display, especially compared to older iPhones. I mean, this display this year even got a little bit bigger, uh, so it is still quite comfortable to read on. Now, when it comes to the productivity side of using my iPhone, my iPhone is all about capture. I'm not, I don't really write out scripts or long posts or any long emails or something like that on my iPhone. I will do quick notes, reply to 
quick emails, things like that, small things on my iPhone. And for me, that capture component is all centered around the action button. I've talked about this before. I use a shortcut called Action Cut, and that is assigned to the action button on my iPhone. Uh, I'll link to a video about that shortcut in the description below so you can go check it out. But basically, it adapts to what focus modes I'm using and shows me my most relevant shortcuts. So from here, I can run my Capture Cut shortcut, which is my quick note shortcut, essentially. It just gives me a text box, and I can type a quick note and it adds it to obsidian my note taking app if i have a safari page open it takes the url from that safari page and puts it in that note as well i can also add tasks to reminders from here i'm I am trying out reminders right now. I, I'm taking a little break from things because I have. there's an experiment I'm wanting to do with reminders. And if it works out, I'll talk about it in a future video. If it doesn't, you'll just see things right back in the dock. From Action Cut, I can add a task right to reminders. Uh, it just drops it right in the inbox and I can deal with it later on. I can add due dates, add it to a specific project, time, whatever. I am somebody that I will absolutely forget about something if I don't write it down. I have to capture an idea that pops into my head, something I need to do, I have to capture it because if I don't, it won't get done. So that's where like the capture aspect really comes into play here. Now, like I said, I do respond to like some emails and messages and stuff like that on my iPhone 16 Pro. And this is where I'm kind of like side eyeing the Pro Max. Talked about it before, I have big hands. It can kind of get hard to type long messages with the 16 Pro with big hands. I find the, the Pro Max size to be a lot more comfortable to type on. But it is just a little bit big and I'm just, I'm not entirely sure right now. I'm kind of wishy-washy over the whole thing. Who knows? Maybe I might go get a Pro Max. We'll see. To get around my not so great ability to type on this phone, I've been using dictation a lot more. But dictation has been hit or miss. It has gotten a lot of stuff wrong for me lately. It has just not been great. That's why I'm like, maybe I should go get a Pro Max. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. But one thing I have been doing and enjoying a lot of is playing more games on my iPhone. Native games like Battle Outro and Vampire Survivors, ton of fun on the iPhone. But what I have been doing a lot of is turning my iPhone into a retro gaming handheld. I've been using the apps Delta and Retro Arc. I ripped a bunch of my games into the ROM format and loaded them up. I've also been using the Razer Kishi Ultra controller with my iPhone. There are a lot of these style of controllers that turn your iPhone into a Nintendo Switch-like device. But this one doesn't just work with the iPhone, it also works with the iPad Mini as well. And with Delta, I can sync my save files from my game, so it doesn't matter which device I'm using. Overall, I love that we can turn our iPhones into retro gaming handhelds now. Alright, so for me, the iPhone is my notification hub. Pretty much all of my notifications come to the iPhone. Uh, we did an episode of Comfort Zone about our notification philosophies. And the, I'll kind of give the quick TLDR of that, but I'll also link to that episode in the description below. Essentially what I do is I turn off most notifications. For most apps, you don't need notifications. If it's something that I would like to see, uh, but it is not critical, something like uh, media, new media from SQL or the music app or... Uh, test flight updates or something like that. I have that go to notification summary. Then if it's something that's a little more timely but not critical, I'll just have it show up on the display, but I definitely don't let it make any sounds. I turn off Apple Watch notifications. It's just there, so when I look at my phone, I'll see it and be like, oh, okay, okay, let's deal with this. But then if it's something critical like phone calls, text messages, calendar appointments, task manager stuff, that uh, obviously pops up on my iPhone's display, will vibrate my iPhone. My iPhone never makes sounds. I've absolutely disabled silent mode. Favorite thing about the 15 Pro line, being able to disable, like not having a hardware toggle to turn on and off silent mode. You can just disable it making noises all the time. Love that. Uh, but I'll also have my watch buzz for critical notifications as well. I am very strict when it comes to notifications because the wrong notification will trigger my ADHD and there goes the next hour. Like, I, I, I have a bad, I fully admit I have a bad, that it, I can absolutely have my an hour or two of my day ruined because of a notification. So I will 100% 
disable them, I will end up going down a rabbit hole. Like I could see a notification for a test flight update and that'll cause me to think about that category of apps and be like, oh, I should see what other apps are in that category. And then I'm doing app store research and all that stuff and there goes an hour of my day. All right, and then the last big category I wanna talk about how and how I'm kind of using my iPhone is automations. Uh, shortcuts is the big part of that. Shortcuts for me is the backbone of my workflow. I have shortcuts that I've kind of talked about already for capturing stuff. I have shortcuts for managing my YouTube channel, website, other aspects of my business and things like that. I use a lot of that. It is incredibly important to me. I have some of those shortcuts set up on timed automations. And I do that on my iPhone because timed automations for me make sense more on the iPhone because I, tr I charge my iPhone every night. So I know it's going to be on a charger. It's going to be ready to go. There's not going to be like, a, oh, you forgot to charge this device. It died. And your automations that were critical to your business didn't run in the middle of the night. So the iPhone handles all of that for me. They're all set up there. So that's it. That's how I'm using my iPhone 16 Pro. I want to hear from you all how you're using your iPhone, like the different use cases for them. My thanks to you, Green, for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.